Welcome to the Dorsonian Power Channel, a different uh, session, live session. This is 4 p.m. here at the afternoon, and I will show you how to take flats with a 6-inch Virtuoso telescope that I have here. I decided to share that in real time with you. It's the first time I will do this, so doing it, so doing it in real time will allow you to watch me struggling or the problems that I may have and surpass them. How to do it? For the beginners, flats and darks are calibration frames that can be used in astrophotography or in live stacking, which is how I use it. During the live stacking, I use the darks. Usually I don't use flats because while the darks you can reuse it during months and then you can take darks again which is a very simple thing to do I have a video about that in the channel the flats you usually have to use for that session you make the flats during the day and then you use that session and then if you change anything in the in the imaging train you will have to do it again so that's the main reason I don't use the flats. I usually adjust the problems that not using flats bring on the fly during the live stacking. And as I don't do a high level astrophotography, I feel I don't need it. I don't need to use flats as an astrophotographer in the professional mode use. Hello Antonio Cortez, hello Adam, hello Samir. <laughs> so I will point the so I will point the Virtuoso telescope right here in front of you to the sky. The sky is blue, the sun is not in front of me. The sun is behind, so I will point to the an area of the sky which is only blue. Actually, we have a huge layer of thin clouds, but that will not be a problem. Now, the darks are used to remove the odd pixels from the background, <coughs> whether in live stacking, whether in astrophotography, and are very useful and easy to do, so we use it all the time to have a, a cleaner background. However, the flats... <coughs> Sorry. However, the flats solve an important issue of capturing an object, whether it's live stacking, whether it's in post-processing, astrophotography, which is the vignetting. I will show you. Because, because the goal of the flats is to compensate the differences of the brightness of the illumination spread it all over the the camera sensor and compensating that will return us a even light image or an image with a, an even distribution of the light all over the screen which I can't have not using flats usually what we have it's the vignetting the vignetting is this horrible circle that we have here the vignetting can be caused for the vignetting can be caused by obstructions physical obstructions like the optical or like the imaging train spacers filter wheel etc but also because of the use because of the because of the use of a large field of view which I have in the ZWO-294. By the way, this doesn't happen with the ZWO-224 because the field of view will be tiny, so it will not grab the part of the... Um... Hold on, I'm doing it wrong. So this is the vignetting. It's a, a horrible artifact that happens when the we use when we use large sensor cameras or when we have 
physical obstructions in the imaging train, like spacers, filter wheels, etc. In this case, this is the source of this vignetting are both. Be aware that using a 224 camera, which has a small sensor, we will get this smaller field of view, so we will get no vignetting. This problem appears with large sensor cameras or with large fields of view, with lower focal lengths, etc. That allow us to have a wider field of view. So this, is, this was yesterday without any flat with a Virtuoso, the 6-inch Virtuoso telescope that I have from, from Skywatcher. And as you can see, <coughs> it has a huge vignetting. Usually, I deal with that and you will see, because along the stacking, the vignetting will get smoother. And with the adjustments on the fly, in the live stacking, it's not post-processing. This is not astrophotography yet. This is in the... the in this is during the live stack. You see, huge vignetting. You see, we can adjust it to make it softer until we get the final picture, which by the way, it's the M51 Whirlpool Galaxy yesterday. Very beautiful. The thing is, you may wondering, if you get this nice picture at the end, during during the live stacking why do you need why will you need the um, the flats anyway well the thing is to make these adjustments i always have to cut a bit of light in the histogram and sometimes not always but sometimes we have to, to cut more than we wish just a bit not not excessive but enough to to bother us and why i don't don't take flats because to take flats we have to take them every session and i don't have the patience to do that and as i don't have the patience to do that and i will not have that patience i'm doing a test i i did flats for my 12 inch dobson and telescope i reused them in a different telescope, an 8-inch telescope, it worked more or less, it was not perfect, but it helped, we can say that it helped, it's better than nothing, so it's a win. And I tried them in this 6-inch Virtuoso and didn't work. Those flats didn't work in this 6-inch Virtuoso, it was a mess of an image and I had to remove them to do the live stacking like I did yesterday. So one part of the test is done. You can't reuse from a different telescope, at least the, the 12 inch in the six inch, which has a different setup, a different size, field of view, etc. And they are not uh, use, useful there. Hello to Loco, Skywatcher Dinos, Carl. This is true for EAA and astrophotography. Maybe, maybe. With astrophotography, you'll need 20, 30 flats. Dark is well. That's that's a, a subject very. Um, that's very subject. That's uh, very subjective, because I take uh, 20 or 30 darks, and they work the same way. 20. If I take 20 or take 30, they work the same way. I decided that 30 it's uh, a good uh, a good a good number to do the darks not the flats the darks and uh, as you have to wait for instance if you are taking darks for 30 seconds you will have to wait 30 by 10 seconds 30 by 30 so it will make you wait longer and it's a bit of cumbersome so to take flats, I will use the quick and easy way. That's my way to do it. You may use other ways. This is my way. It's the simple way. It worked fine. It's working very, very well with a 12 inch. You could watch in real time in my live streams. So I will use the same technique. 
which is very, very beginner friendly. No, no, no need to spend money on this. You just have to use SharpCap Pro. SharpCap Pro, it's uh, SharpCap, it's free, but to do flats and darts, I think you have to have the paid version, which is not expensive, but I have because I use it all the time. So what I will use, I have here two options, but I will not use, I have an elastic because for this six inch will, will fit, but I will use the same and it's easier. The same as I, I, I will use the same thing that I used with a 12 inch, which was a belt that we can tight very well with a t-shirt. I will use the t-shirt method which worked very well for me. I don't need to buy LED lights to do this. This is the, the keep it simple way. So I will open this first, hold on. Hello, Nash. Let's take the dwarf from here. Let's prepare this. You know that this is real time. It can be all wrong. It can can goes wrong. You know that. Be tolerant. Okay, first thing, this is the, the imaging train from yesterday. What I did was, I made this session, nice session, watching the Whirlpool Galaxy, everything focused, everything working fine. The camera in the right position that I want it to be. And now I leave it, I left this as is, because I will need to use the same position every time I, I try to reuse the flats. Now, let me tell you that I'm not so confident as I was with a 12-inch Dobsonian with this reusing the flats in this telescope because of this focuser. You know that this focuser, it's a bit jerky. And while in the 12-inch I have a mark in the Starizona Nexus, I have a mark, it's here, Look, with a, a sticker, you see, this is a, a glow-in-the-dark sticker and this marks exactly the position with a thumb screw of the focuser. So it's very easy to, even in the dark, to place the imaging train in the right position to reuse the flats. In this telescope, it's not so easy. Besides, we have to fine-tune it turning the focuser to fine tune just a bit at the end and I don't know if it will work. I will try it anyway. I'm sure the first goal is to make the flats work in a regular way. Then reuse it, I don't know if it will work, but we will try. Maybe it works. Now, another thing I want to show you, by the way, is the new egg that I did here, which is this simple tube here, a plastic tube from a, an electrical uh, cable that we use outside, outdoors, and this has a vertical cut and I can take this, you see, very easy, this has the right measure to use my 6-inch Virtuoso with a focal reducer. So, if I'm using without a focal reducer, re if I'm using without a focal reducer, I will move the sliders all up and then adjust everything. But then, imagine that I want to use that night the focal reducer. It has to be, I have to move the sliders down to a certain position 
to have everything more or less focused, to have everything more or less focused, and then refocus, doing just a fine tune in this mess of a focuser. To make the things easier and straight to the point, I just place this with the right measure and then I move the sliders until these touch here. It's the best way to do. Usually I used, I used to use this uh, glow-in-the-dark marks, but I discovered that this is much more easier and faster. Now take the cap. Beautiful. Beautiful six inch. Sorry. Yeah, sharp cap is not expensive and worth the money. It's the software I use, my preference. Hello, Astro Wombler. Fun fact, you can take flats when observing visually. If you blink your eye very fast, repeatedly... Let me pull this to read better. Fun fact, you can take flats... You can take flats when observing visually. If you blink your eye very fast, repeatedly, while you are observing an object, you will see more detail at times. Try next time out. Not only that, and the, aver the averted vision also. Our brain, it's our brain fault. That's the same trick I used to focus a DSLR on my Skywatcher without moving the mirror. Okay, let's do this. Because this is quarter past 4 p.m. So this will be the position pointing to more or less it will be like this, pointing to a, a clean area of the sky, a blue sky, with thin clouds, doesn't matter. And the only thing I will need to do is to connect the camera. And then we will see in SharpCap how I do it. Notice, notice how easy I do the things because I have everything prepared for a lazy way to do astronomy. I have the cable right over there. It's just to pull and connect. It's already connected to the laptop. I don't have to add one more step to the, the process. You see how this is very important for beginners. Prepare your stuff, your observatory, in a way that you can have the less effort as possible. <laughs> That's my advice. So when you go outside to watch, you have effortless um, process. So it's all connected. I just have to connect SharpCap. Let's connect SharpCap. We don't need this image anymore. I will use this to, to make a video about it, to help beginners. I don't have yet in my library. And then the results, we will see the results in a live stream. Because now we will take the flats, but the results we will see only during the night, of course.
maybe tomorrow. Today it's uh, with many thin clouds. Okay, this is shark cap. Open the camera. Now, when I open the camera, I have it in a sequence and it's at the maximum gain at 550 and two second exposures by default. I have it like that to search during the night. As you can see, this is all white because it's during the day. By the way, I will soon make a detailed video explaining in a shill mode, explaining only to YouTube channel members. This will be only to YouTube channel members because it's not a video, it's very specific and it's not a video that uh, that fits the the channel and um, it's very sp it will be ver very specific to help the youtube channel members that uh, need help doing the sequencer which is a very very powerful tool so soon i don't know when when i have everything prepared i will do a video just for you youtube channel members doing all the steps in a sequence in a, a quiet mode only for channel members you can be comfortable asking whatever you want and co connecting with me to figure it out once for all and then it, once you learn you use you will use it forever believe me 100 percent true this will happen once you figure if you use shark cap once you figure how to use the sequencer and I spoiler it's easy easier than you can think once you get the trick you will use it forever because it's so so powerful and saves you loads of time notice how I quickly open the camera with a push of a button with everything setting up the gain I want the exposure I want the field of view I want the brightness I want everything everything and cleaning everything that was at the background in this case was nothing because it's the start now to do the darks we come here to the top ah no i have to first first i will have of course to place the t-shirt and then open the window this is real time <laughs> Let's see if it works. This is a white t-shirt from Star Trek. Let's see? And I will grab like this without the symbol. Only this, this side, the back of the t-shirt. Let's see if I can do this without any accident. Well, this finder doesn't help. While in the 12 inch and the 8 inch is very easy to place the t-shirt, this finder will not help. Let's see. This has to be very well stretched. This finder will not help at all. Now the belt. Yes, the focus needs to be the same, but the focus will be the same because when I'm using this and I will use most uh, part of the time, I will mostly use the um, this imaging train, which is, by the way, the ZW294, an infrared cut filter from Mother, and a focal reducer, a cheap one from GSO or something. So I will use this as is 
loads of times. Actually, all the time, except on on planets and the moon, which is which is when I will use a barrel instead. But in this case, the focus is always the same because I don't touch anything. The thing is, how can I place this because of the final? Will this work? Yes, I know. By the back. I will have to pass this, this belt from the back of the final. The red dot final. Let's see if, if I can do it. Okay, now, more or less tighten it. I will not tighten more for now. And, oh god, this is a mess, this finder. Can you imagine I have to take the finder scope out? I don't want to do that. Elastic bands. I have here one. Because this is not even. It can be like this. Well, it can because it has plastic here. Let me see if I can do it. Can you imagine doing this every day before the night session? No way. Not for me. Test work, the reusing. What a cumbersome to do this. What a cumbersome, listen to me. Well... It's harder with a virtuoso, for sure. It's looking fine now. See? Look. Eh? Looks good. It's a cumbersome here. But as we have the it seems like it's wrong, but it's not, because here as a plastic, you see? The 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 aperture it's only here. You see? Look, look. You see? So here we can mess it all, it doesn't matter. But here it matters. It has to be very well stretched. I think it's fine. Looks good. Looks good. Huh? I think everything is fine. This is a cumbersome to me. You see uh, why I don't use flats? 
it's, it isn't worth it. Let me rest a bit. I find this extremely annoying to do with a DSLR, of course. Just putting the cloth over the lens disturbs the focus. I try to be pretty close to the same focus, but it's usually a guess. I've never had an issue with dust, only vignetting. Yes, my problem is the vignetting. The goal here to me is the vignetting. I never saw dust spots in my... I have everything super clean also. With my my system with the uh, isopropyl alcohol, incredible. And I use that system to sunglasses, everything. It's a myth. Some people think that, uh, well, it's 99% uh, alcohol, pure uh, purity, it damage whatever. Well, it may damage uh, rubber or something, but the coatings will not be damaged at all. And even with uh, cheap uh, sunglasses, I use every day. Every day that I leave home, I do with a spray. I pass with a spray and the uh, isopropyl 99% alcohol every day of my life. Every single day. I have that prepared just to, to flush and clean the sunglasses because here I, I use uh, always sunglasses outside. And I do, I've been doing that for years. I never damage any, any sunglasses with that system. Another myth. Yeah, I, I think I did it well. <laughs> Until now, so far. <laughs> because, you know, this is real time. If uh, suddenly it's very windy, if this falls, you will see everything. <laughs> I can't imagine. That's why many people don't do live streams. We are super exposed. I use isopropyl, even with my VR headset never any issues straight onto my zw02 of course in the sense or everything the only place i don't use the isopropyl i use a, a, a specific product is on the televisions on the monitors i use a specific product from amazon a good one i spray it works very well and it's it's cheaper i tried once with in an old television and uh, it the isopropyl, I don't know if it hurts. That I don't know. It's a little easier with electronic autofocus as you as you can set to the same focus number every time, yeah. You see, I don't have that as if I'm not an astrophotographer as you. I'll do it anyway. <laughs> well, let's see how to do it. Sharp cap. Nothing happened, I connect the camera, higher gain, as default. Now, the trick is here. This is very easy. Capture dark, capture flat. We choose capture flat. And now, as you can see, here pops this window, this small window. I don't touch anything except this. Apply, I uncheck this. Apply new flat when capture complete. I uncheck it. Okay. The rest, 20, the number of flats, by default, I leave it as is. Okay. I just uncheck that. And now, but before capturing, I will move this away. I will play with this. Better saying, play with again and exposure. This is to be here, check it. Logarithmic scale here. This arrow. You check this box. Because if you uncheck it, it will be like this. You check this box. And the goal is to move all the white bar, the white wave. Not uh, forget the, the, the other. The, the blue, the green and the red. Because they will be all over the place. You will focus everything on the white one. And the goal is to find, to move this, the peak of the wave, between 60 
and 50 and 60 percent here, this area. We will place it here before taking the flat. So let's do it. First, I will place because I prefer the 350. It's my game. It's a question of reference to my skies. And I will lower. Now, I am from two seconds exposure. I am now at 1.95 milliseconds. We are on the sub second on the lucky imaging plane. <laughs> and we keep lowering it. You see? 0 0.4. Here. You see? 0 0.122. Very low. But we don't want this here. We want this here. So I will grab the, the slider. It's easier for me. And I will slightly move it to the right until let me see the gain I used in the, the last flights I don't remember it was 150 okay I will do the same I will lower this to 152. I know why I did that. Okay. I lowered the gain because lowering the gain, you will have... Um, you will shrink the, the bands, the wave bands, the wave lines. So it's easier. And now, and it's better. Now I will re increase the exposure. You see, they are, I think it was because of that. No, they are st stretching again. Okay, but I will use 150 because they worked well in the other flats. Let me see what happens if I lower this. It's the same. Okay, 150 will be fine. And now, I wish this could be more shrink let me see if I take the logarithmic because this is on the fly it's the first time I remember logarithmic okay I unchecked the logarithmic to have this peak here and then we will see now increase the exposure the slider okay we have no, less we just we touch just a bit and this moves right away. Okay, we have this exactly at the middle, between 50 and 60, so it's 55 more or less. That's our goal. Now let me check on logarithmic to see what happened. Yes, this is the peak. Okay, okay, now we can take the flats, right? Auto color, lower the gain to one other. No, 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 I will not lower. I will not lower. I will leave it like this because it worked with um, three, um, 30 and 40 is the best. Well, Fred Light, I, let me tell you something. Two things. One, that's not what Robin said and Robin made this. Two, it worked very well for me following Robin instructions, placing the histogram between 50 and 60. And as it worked for me, I will keep it that way. And you do the same. All of you beginners, if you find you trial and error anything in my channel that I do, you trial and error and you find a different setting or solution that works better for you, of course you will apply your solution. You can be inspired or motivated or stimulated by what I do, but you should think with your own head and with trial and error, see, because sometimes it happens you have different situations, different sky, different setups that work better with other things. Things, whatever the thing is. And this is the same. I'm using, you can use, if you are a beginner, you can start using what I do here. And then you know what uh, is better. This is 
this was uh, told by Robin from Sharp Cap, so um, it has authority in the matter. <laughs> that doesn't mean that he's right always. It's not. But uh, at least it worked. And as it worked, if it didn't work, I will uh, search. Now, let's take the flats. Capture. Oh, it's here already. I moved. Here. So we come back to this... To this window. And we just do this. Start. And that's it. The telescope is disconnected. Nothing is connecting. It's not tracking nothing. It's simply pointing to a blue part of the sky. It has thin clouds, but it's even. And this is very fast. Already took the, the frames. Oh, not averaging. Okay. And we have here... Oh, I made it wrong. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I did it wrong because it's on PNG and I want to record it in feeds. But you can see the effect. This is... This will be applied during the live stack and we'll compensate the vignetting you see you will see in the next live stream so as i did it wrong i forgot to i always forget this i don't know why i always forget to change this i have this on by default on png you know why because when i'm watching planets or something and if something weird happen on the screen i just take a snapshot here snapshot and it records me immediately a PNG. But uh, the FITS files have, has to be changed here to FITS files to do the, the flats, of course, silly me. Now let's do it again. This is the same, didn't change. Capture, flat. Start. Now it's averaging. Averaging. Then. Let me check. Where are they? Capture flats, master flat. C sharp cap. Ah, it's with another date. Okay, 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 okay. Flats. Because I have a file which I call flats, which is the file that I use. I have a fits view where I will open it. It's windy. You see? This is the FITS file that I will use. This being applied with the darks also during the live stack will work. By the way, there's a thing that I didn't tell you, which is that I was with the, flat, with the darks uh, being applied, but it seems that it doesn't matter. When I took the flats here, here, I left here, subtract dark, I left this, but I think it doesn't matter. But it it worked fine with the last one, so I left as is. So, we have the, um, the flat frame. Now, when I, when I do the live stacking, I just have to go here and click on apply the flats. I will choose. Now I have the... The ones that I'm applying to the 12 inch. But I now I will move that file, that fits file. I will copy it. I will copy it. To my flats library. And I will call it. Virtuoso. Behind the, the name of the file. I will call it virtuoso and then the default master flat 
with um, the reference. So what happens is that now I can go here and pull the flat that I want when I use the virtuoso. Now I just have, if it works, I just have to add it to a sequencer and I will do different sequences to the virtuoso only. Because I, as the flats, the sequences are made to the 12 inch and the 8 inch, now I will have to do the same sequences but with different flats to the virtuoso, if it works, the reusing thing. I don't know if it works. It's not so heavy if it doesn't work with a virtuoso because a virtuoso has a larger field of view than the 8 inch and than the, the 12 inch. Thus, we can crop it easily. So it's not so important with a virtuoso. But it will improve if I can reuse the flats. It will improve for sure the live stacking, the live streams with uh, EAA, with you. <laughs> yeah, the electronic focuser. I'm waiting for uh, an auto focuser for the refractor. It will be fine. It's it's on the way. It's on the way. So now that I took the flats, I will not take more because I I think they are fine. Well, I, actually, I can do just as a safety measure because I don't want to do this mess again the t-shirt and everything I can do hold on I can do this one I named the virtuoso it's the, the the important one but as a a matter of or a measure a caution measure we can play with it again where is the histogram? Here, at the bottom. We can try that uh, suggestion of uh, who said Fred Led, no? Yeah, Fred Led. Okay, we will try because I'm open-minded. I will uh, not to 100. I will. Well, I can use the the 100. Okay, 100. And let me take this out of here. 100 and now we have to oh come on pin this okay pinned we have to increase the exposure of course this is on fits yes it's on fits we have to increase now with uh, 100 and we'll move you say 30 and 40 no between 30 and 40 and let's do the the experiment why not why not 30 and 40 okay and now I will capture, it's here, start, okay, it's processing, Fred Led, I will show that, the results, the comparison in the live stream, the next live stream, probably the next, I don't know, but why is this so stretched, so shrinked? Why is this like this? Let me do it again. 30 and 40, you said. Okay. 100 gain. I will repeat this. I think I will delete the last one. Hold on. No, I don't need to delete. I will do it again. Capture flat. The window, start. No, but this is not, now it's not stretched. It was something, it was something in the sky. No? Now it's stretched, the, this white wave. And now it's not, I don't understand this. Well, I will do it anyway. I will, will rename it here. Um, 100 gain and uh, 
30, 40 isto. So I know what I'm doing. Okay? Remove the other flat first. Ah, okay, 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 okay. You're right. I placed the flat. None. You're right. Let's do it again. Hold on. Okay, let's do it again. This is funny to do this in real time with you. F 30 and 40. Uh, the peak is here, a bit less, 194, 188. Yeah, 188. This is the peak, a bit less, 186. Yeah. 186, flat removed, fits files, everything is fine, capture flat pop window start okay let's do it then we compare we should be open-minded at least is how I live well there are things that we know so so much for sure but it it again it messed here with it changed the peak here well, it doesn't matter. I think, to be honest, I think to remove the flats and the fra and the darks from here, the control panel, will not affect the, um, the process of taking the flats. That's my feeling. I, I'm not sure, but... It's what I'm watching. Okay. And now I will copy this one to my flats library and I will call it one hundred gain again thirty forty mm, east. I know what's happening here. Usually I don't get that accurate, but for me just below 50% on the Instagram it is that what works best. The SLR, ah. You see? If it's what works... Well, the between 50 and 60 worked very well for me. And it's what Robin recommended. But now I will try both and uh, maybe they work both okay. I think darks have to be known as well. Okay, I will do one with uh, known darks, but they work fine with me because the darks, if you think, the darks will not affect the, the vignetting. The darks ha have uh, other, other function. Test with autocolor. Doing autocolor here. Hold on. Oh, come on, this is pin. One pin. It has no autocolor here. What do you mean? In the mini histogram here? Here? Autocolor here? Well, well, I'm wait for your response. No, I, I don't. I can't take it. If I, I'm going to test it again. I was taking the T-shirt, but I can't, of course. I'm so silly sometimes. No. So where's the autocolor? Here we don't have in the brain or in the 
This is the brain, no, it's called the brain. The brain, here the histogram. Temperature 40, 39.5 Celsius. It's <laughs> incredible. With uh, the weather, during the, the day it goes to the roof. So where, Fred Laed? Okay, I will do another test without any flat and dark. But with the dark supplied, well, I think I did it already and it was the same. Well, I will do it anyway. I will do it anyway, but now with my... The result, it worked for me. Fits files. I will place it at 60 and... To 70, to 70 milliseconds. I think he means white balance in control image. Image controls the brightness. I have it on 50-50. Ah, you mean that uh, turning this white balance red and blue both to auto and then s wait until it stops. It's that? Yeah, okay, okay. Okay, I will do it. I hope I don't forget this because if I forget this, this stays like this, I think. It changed something. Okay, darks known, apply flats known. Okay, now I will do the both. I will do with my scale 50 60 and then with yours 30 40. So I have to crank down the exposure. Okay, the peak is here, 230. This is the one for me. Let me see if I... Let me take the control of the files, because if not, this is a mess. We're taking too, ma too many... Okay, 47. Okay. So I have the 100 gain. Okay, okay. This will be mine without a color only. Okay. Let's take this one first. Capture. Flat. No green is no green is white. Yes, we uh, green is the, the default. Okay. Start. Let's see what happens. Hmm. Moved again the curves. Weird. And again. It moves while it's capturing. And then it moved again to the, the start position. When it's averaging captured flat frames. Interesting. And now it moves again. It increased. It, this is weird a lot. Okay. Offset. It says off, offset. 0 0.63. Okay. In this file it had offset equals 0.63%. Weird. Too low. Okay, that doesn't matter. I will do. My auto color. 
My auto color. My way auto color. Now. I will do it your way. With auto color. I think that because as Robin said, we don't we just have to be careful with the white balance. I think this that we are doing playing with the colors will do nothing. To be honest, nothing to the flats. That's my feeling. But uh, we will try. Nothing has a, a good result to, to see. But I think the result will be nearly the same. At least with the same percentage here. Okay, now let's lower this percentage 40 50. Okay. 40 50. This will be your way. It's almost the same as me. 40 50 is not so far away from 50 60. But okay, 40 50. Everything, capture dark. But when I click on capture dark, this moved. I have to move this again. 40 50. Weird. 40 50. A bit less to be precise as we are doing this once. We will do it the best we can. Exactly at the middle. 40 50. Okay. Now capture. Start. Okay. Averaging. Taking time, okay. Offset 0 0.4. Again offset. Again offset. Sixteen fifty five twenty seven. And this was... Okay, I will write here. Yours... No, yes. Yours auto color. And between 40... And 50 isto. Then we will see the results. Very nice. Okay, thank you for being here. And now we'll clean all this mess and store it. And I will be doing the live stream probably and maybe testing this with the virtuos. I don't know. The next time with the virtuos, we will test this and uh, probably tomorrow it will be a better night tomorrow i think according to the forecast tonight uh, will be this has uh, loads of uh, of thin clouds thank you again it was a nice afternoon with you and see you in probably tomorrow to loco <laughs> i don't know i don't know but if uh, something changes i i will do it but probably tomorrow thank you bye bye